I wish I could say that there was some sort of like grand design for my career, but I've been very uh, instinctive, I feel like, about what feels right for me at the moment and also what's available. What exactly do you do for a living? Cleaner. You mean you're a hitman? Cool. The Professional, which came out in 1994, it was the first film I made. I was 11 when I started, I turned 12 while we were shooting. It was so exciting, of course, my first time being on a set and getting to act with incredible actors like Jean Reno and Gary Oldman. And I remember um, also just being so excited by getting to be in Paris because we filmed all the interiors in Paris. And so on the weekends, my mom would take me to like the Rodin Museum or there's this place, Aqua Boulevard, that I really liked that was like a fake indoor beach where they had like waves and stuff. On set too, I think I remember like the playing more than anything. Everything felt like a game to me and, and it was a really fun way to get to go into, into acting. He's open the door. <laughs> There's a tour going through here. I felt so lucky to do Mars Attacks. I was 14 and Tim Burton was one of my absolute favorite directors. I mean, I was like so into Edward Scissorhands as a kid. And um, of course, to get to work with, you know, Jack Nicholson and Glenn Close and um, Lucas Haas. And it was just like a dream come true to get to be on that set. It was a very short, part for me, um, but I, I really loved getting to work on it. I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. So Star Wars episode one, George Lucas was incredible to work with. He's just such a smart person and very kind person too. And it was just interesting to get to spend time with him and of course get some insight into his, his ability to invent this world that didn't exist that now is like a very big part of the cultural lexicon. I remember I'd been to Japan, I went to Kabuki Theater, and when I saw the sort of drawings for Queen Amidala, I was like, oh my God, that reminds me of the Kabuki. And so I tried as a 16 year old to kind of like channel that influence um, because that it was such a specific style and the slow kind of movement and very, kind of dreamlike, um, but I mean, I don't, I don't know if any of it reads. You're paying attention to the spaceships. <laughs> We're not gonna make out or anything. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just like totally ruined that moment in that. No, no, it's no. just that like, we're not gonna make out, okay? Oh, no, no, I... I read the script and it was one of those things where like, I read the script and really responded and everyone around me was like, you don't need to be doing this. This is some random movie from this random first time director. Zach was incredible. He was a, a great director. We filmed that in like 25 days also. And we had the best time. And it was just really fun, kind of like young people making a movie together. And then it was really exciting when the movie came out and had this kind of like moment where people really responded to it. That was like, really, I'm, I'm sorry, I forget I just said that. I'm, that's dumb. I saw this face, this vision. You were perfect. Life goes easy. Closer was one of the greatest pieces of writing I've I've ever read. Patrick Marber's just absolutely one of one of our great writers. I suddenly had this feeling that everything was connected. We're all part of it. We were shooting in Berlin, which was an amazing place, and with the Wachowskis, who are interesting, provocative, smart, and very kind people. Um, and so it was wonderful to have that combination of like really, really challenging, interesting, relevant material. Playing that character was a real gift. I really like begged for that part because I, I was so into the, the graphic novel. Yeah, and shaving my head was, it was a great experience in life, not just in film. It's surprising how something so simple can make you feel like what a big deal so many gender expectations are on you and how different people treat you and how different people look at you just from your hair, which is kind of crazy. Are we ready for it? I don't sleep, mother off that yak and that turban. Do it 
fucking 120 getting hit while I'm swerving. Damn, Natalie, you a crazy chick. Yo, shut the f up and suck my the Lonely Island rap um, for SNL. I think the idea for the rap came partly out of me saying to the Lonely Island guys that I really was into hardcore rap and they were surprised by that. That just kind of came, came out of that conversation. It was such a dream come true to get to do Saturday Night Live and then more fun and more crazy than I ever imagined. Just one of the greatest experiences in my career. And I remember, I mean, this really dates me, but it was like kind of the beginning of YouTube. We kind of were like, what is this thing? You give your content for free. And it was like this whole new kind of concept. And um, also I think I had been really painted as like a, this like good, proper, serious girl, like college girl, you know? Um, and so it was fun to kind of play with people's expectations of me. Or, Go against them. Black Swan was uh, an incredible experience for so many reasons. Um, I had always loved dance so much, and it's kind of the art I, I most um, am moved by. It expresses things that it, I feel like can't be expressed by other media. It took like 10 years for it to come together. It was such an incredible opportunity to get to kind of like live out this this fantasy of, of doing all this dance training and working with an incredible choreographer who um, became you know, my, my partner and, and I really feel like it, it pushed me as an actor and as an artist and Darren, he was a great collaborator. I felt like Darren genuinely was interested in my point of view and my input and it really felt like, like a partnership. When I saw the, the final cut of Black Swan, I was completely surprised by what the movie was like. I thought we were shooting something like almost like documentary style. <laughs> and I watched it and was like, oh, this is like an over the top thriller. It was a, an amazing kind of wake up call that film is a director's medium. And you kind of, as an actor, have no idea what is going on and are kind of being led and shaped. On A Tale of Love and Darkness, I was really excited to direct um, and I, it was the first time I really just envisioned a film. While I was reading the book, I, I saw it in my mind and I felt really strongly that I had to do it. And I think really it changed me as an actor too because to watch yourself over and over and over again, to learn how to give yourself kind of feedback that makes you change your performance. It felt very close to parenting to me. Like your your job is really to try and get the best out of everyone. And like, how can you support and encourage people to get their best contribution to, to the project? I believe that the characters we read about on the page end up being more real than the men who stand beside us. Well, Jackie, uh, which came out in 2016 was very lucky experience because I was terrified of playing a, a real life character whose people were so familiar with too, you know. I had played like Anne Boleyn before, but no one knew what she looked like or walked like or talked like when Jackie's so iconic. I don't think I ever would have done it except that I was living in Paris and they were shooting in Paris. <laughs> it just logistically really fit in with my life at that time. Working with the director Pablo Lorraine was just an incredible um, collaboration and it's so interesting like the way he works is just different from from the way I had ever worked before and and then the character was unexpectedly so rich and ripe for our imagination. I thought that with someone real that you would be almost constricted by having to be like stick to the facts, but she's so fascinating. There's so much we don't know. Like the more we know, the, the less we know almost because there are so many gaps in the information and it makes you wonder so much. And she, she was really just such an incredible figure. I was under a lot of stress after my accident. But that's what this show is about. It's about rebirth. Vox Lux, which is coming out this year in 2018. The whole film was shot in, I think, 22 days, and it was really fast, and I did a lot of prep because 
The character talks a lot. She has like these huge, huge monologues and a, a Staten Island accent. So I worked with my dialect coach a lot on the material beforehand. And then of course, I also had the prep for the singing and dancing stuff. I recorded the music before and then learned all the dance routines, which were choreographed by my husband. So that made it a little more fun and easier because it was at home. I think what I have taken out of the roles has been more speaking to my personality or like the experiences and who I've worked with that has been a great collaborator that has drawn things out of me that make me feel more free and more able to explore things.